Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be talking about the soon to be released Atherin Genesis GP49 in Norfolk Southern Scheme. This comes equipped with DC, DCC, and Tsunami Sound. So, with that said, let's get started on the review of the newest release from Atherin Model and Trains. So as most of you know, it is about to be the 4th of July and you're going to hear a lot of pops in the background. I promise they're not gunshots, I don't live in a bad neighborhood, but there are uh, fireworks being let off in a large field that is near my home and so you're going to hear a lot of pops. So I apologize for that in advance, but we'll go ahead and get started on the review of this Atherin Genesis GP49. This is Norfolk Southern Scheme as I mentioned. And as always with these brand new items, I do an unboxing right in front of you to see what you get straight out of the box. First thing is the standard glossy cover Atherin Genesis manual. These manuals feature a lot of different information including uh, handling and maintenance, the functions on the Tsunami sound decoder, uh, CV programming, exploded parts diagrams, and actual pictures of the prototype GP 39s and 49s. So, and then it also has your warranty information here on the back. So this catalog, there's your 49s there in the Norfolk Southern. Catalog's 22 pages long, glossy cover. Something that's been around uh, from Atherin for a long time. You got your limited warranty. One year limited warranty through Atherin Genesis or Atherin. Got your Atherin news flyer telling you what's going on, telling them to check, telling you to check them out on Facebook and YouTube. Um, and then you have your locomotive itself. So what I'm going to do here is uh, turn box so you see the foam come off for the first time. And there you got your Norfolk Southern locomotive inside. Atherin uh, case, uh, encasing and closing has been the same for a while with a few improvements along the way. They've uh, got this typical plastic sleeve here, no big deal, with the plastic bracing inside and a couple of bracing points and some styrofoam around the side. So I'll get that out of the way. You have to I have to apologize, I don't have a whole lot of space to work. So let me just get this out here. As you see, they've got a couple brackets that uh, hold the trucks so that the trucks don't get damaged in shipment. And you get some nice bracing here. Usually keeps things well protected. Because as a company that, uh, you know, has, has had some uh, fragile issues in the past, you know, they want to up the padding and things like that. You know a lot of people talk about Atherin being fragile but there's a lot of detail parts on these Atherin locomotives. So the more parts you have and the more prototypical thicknesses and stuff you tend to run into that but this uh, doesn't have any broken parts as far as I can tell yet out of the box. You're seeing it for the first time just like I am. It would probably be good if I got it on the rails. But I'm working in a real confined space because I've got boxes surrounding me for this pending move. So here you have the locomotive out of the box. We'll go ahead and take a look from the front to the back and go over some details. Now people have been asking for more head-on views of the locomotives. They, uh, some people don't like the side views, so I want to give you a head-on shot of this locomotive and we'll cover some of the details and just some of the parts and things that stick out to me. Uh, handrails are the prototypical thinness. Um, they are, they do have a little give on each side as you can see there, that side a little more than this side uh, because it's extended further up and it doesn't have as much support. But the handrails have a nice uh, yellow safety painting 
there. It seems like even painting, I don't see any paint splotches. But let's go ahead and start from the top with the horn. You've got the two headlights here. You've got the uh, number boards, obviously, Norfolk Southern paint scheme with the uh, horse logo, thoroughbred logo. You've got the handrails, which are uh, a little more durable, but occasionally pop out of their um, stanchion little holes there, but not very often. You've got the painted uh, silver-tipped MU hoses with the McHenry couplers, which are plastic. Um, McHenry owned by Atherin, as we've mentioned before. You've got your firecracker antenna up top here, and you've got separately applied grab irons all the way down. Now, one thing I do want to mention that you can probably see is you've got a couple crooked headlights in this locomotive. This particular locomotive is not due to come out um, until the end of July. So what I have is a production sample, but they take these samples and occasionally tweak them and uh, adjust it at the factory. So I'm not sure if that is just a one-time issue or if you'll see that on your model. Uh, usually they fix these type of things when they see them. So you see the uh, headlights are a little uneven, but it looks like it's slight, but we'll take a look at it in detail. Moving along to the side, you've got the truck detail, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> working our way up to the cab, you got a clear cab window that is operational, moves. You've got a detailed interior, but no in interior cab figures. You've got a clear print, which is kind of, uh, I sound like a broken record saying it because I expect it out of almost every manufacturer now. You've got handrails which are, are not wavy in this case, didn't have any wavy problems with them. Um, and they're fairly durable, they don't pop out of the, the stanchions don't pop out of the holes on the side like I've had in the past with some locomotives uh, of different brands including Atherin from time to time. So that's good. Again, nice clear NS logo along the side with walkway uh, lighting that's non-operational along the side there. Going to the back more of the same with the uh, stairs, yellow uh, painted. You've got a uh, coupler cut levers front and rear here. And I believe we're losing focus. Trying to get used to this new Sony camera here. And it doesn't like to, doesn't like to play well sometimes. Okay, we'll just stay at that distance. So. What you have here, again, MU hoses and McHenry coupler. You got the bell off the back end here. Again, two more headlights uh, or taillights, however you want to call them. Still incandescent, separately applied grabs. Another horn on the back, which is uh, accurate for the prototype. They had horns on the front and back. And uh, just more of the same from the front. So now let's take a view of the top. And then we'll get into the operation of this GP49. So taking a look at the top of this locomotive, we'll start from the front again with the horn. Some grab irons that are separately applied. The firecracker antennas, which I talked about. You've got the uh, sand filler cap. You've got the dustbin hatch and then right over here by the blower housing which I didn't point out earlier this area is the blower housing right there behind that you've got the main exhaust you get the dynamic brake area which has the dynamic brake fan grill up top the dynamic brake fan obviously inside there which is a separately uh, distinguished detail and then working your way back you've got the two radiator fans back here and a radiator fan grab iron and then you've got another sand filler cap back here along with the horn that I mentioned and the bell that's on top. So that's the top detail of this locomotive. Again, no broken parts. Everything seems pretty sturdy except for maybe that front handrail just a tad bit. Let's go ahead and get into operation. We can see what those incandescent bulbs look like. Let's see how smooth this runner is and of course listen to the sounds if we can get past the fireworks that are trying to compete with us outside. So as you can tell, I've dimmed the lights down quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and fire the locomotive up. You've seen the details. So let's go ahead and just focus in on listening to the sounds of the 
uh, applying track power to the locomotive. You can hear what that tsunami sound decoder sounds like. Then we'll go ahead and take a look at the incandescent lights. There you have the incandescent bulbs. One is slightly brighter than the other, maybe with the position inside the housing. But as you can see, the incandescent bulbs gives it the most accurate appearance, in my opinion, and glow. Now, that doesn't mean I don't like LEDs. I like them as well. But uh, that's what you got. And there's just a slight, eh, I'd say, significant brightness on the left versus the right. Maybe because of that crooked positioning we were talking about earlier. Now that we have some lights back on, let's listen to the bell, the horn, a couple other sounds, and then move along to operation. So as with all VCC equipped locomotives that I know about, the bell is F1. Whistle's F2, or horn, because this is a diesel. Short whistle is F3. I'm going to go ahead and use that with the F2 to make a great crossing sequence. one was just me turning off the short whistle, the short horn. Dynamic brakes are F4. And another one I'll go over just for the heck of it is uh, F10, which is the coupler. And then the last one, which some of you really enjoy, is the F8, which is the mute, so you can hear me better. So with that said, that covers those aspects of this locomotive. The last one we're going to cover is operation, then we'll wrap this review up. Okay, I've zoomed out as far as possible. I'm going to resume the sound so you can hear the notches up of the engine as we move into the speed steps, and I'm going to yell out the speed steps as we go up. There's one speed step, it is moving along. Two speeds of steps, it's moving along without any jerking. Atherin Genesis Drive is really uh, proving itself worthy. Three. Still smooth. Four. Five. Keep in mind, but uh, these actually prototypically run the other direction going forward, so this is technically backwards. And it's programmed in the decoder is backwards right now. I'm going to switch directions. I'm going to give it a little more gas. It's 14, 15, 
38 speed steps. And I gotta shut it down before it hits some of my hoppers back there. Alright, I went ahead and silenced the locomotive with F8, the mute. And boy, that that is uh, very touchy for some reason <laughs> with the zoom lately. I think I forgot to put slow zoom on and now it's very touchy. Anyhow, what we have here is a very nice locomotive. Uh, the overall features of the locomotive are nice. There are a lot of nice details. I think the only thing you really got to look out for is the headlight situation if they're, you know, angled weird or anything like that. Again, it's kind of hard to tell with this being a production sample versus something that would ship directly to you guys. I really don't think there's going to be a mass problem with crooked headlights or anything like that. But I do want to point it out because it's obvious with the 1080p HD and I'm not going to dance around facts. This one has a bit of a crooked headlight. Uh, pointed a little down compared to the other headlight. Uh, there is some other nice detail that we didn't really talk about that much. Safety tread, windshield wipers, things like that. The Atherin windshield wipers I always liked because they're thin uh, metal or etched metal type of windshield wiper versus the big thick plastic ones that don't look prototypically uh, thin at all. They look like they're thick plastic making your model look a little toy-like. Let's go ahead and talk about price because in today's world, that's what really is the bottom line. MSRP is $269.98 for the DC, DCC, and sound version. Again, equipped with that Tsunami sound decoder. And MSRP for just the straight DC version is $169.98. Now, as all of you know, discounts range from nada to really steep discounts of, uh, I've seen, 30%. Uh, 20 some percent from Train World Online, uh, or they're actually just trainworld.com now, um, and other online retailers that have good prices. And I also uh, encourage you to support your local hobby shop. Either way, online retailers or local hobby shops, you've got your, uh, your great pricing on some of those guys as they get more competitive with each other and things like that. They can price this locomotive in the high 100s. Low 200s with sound, the low 100s with non-sound. So, I'm not much of a Norfolk Southern fan. I don't know much about this scheme. You guys at Arrivet Counters are really are into the details and every little thing. Eat your heart out with the 1080p HD. You can zoom in a little bit with my hairline trigger zoom here that I'm trying to get used to. And see some of the details for yourself and make that opinion on your own. That's it guys, sorry for being off my game a little bit. I'm working around a lot of boxes right now as I pack things up and get ready to move them. We've got one more review that will be uploaded in a few days of the Alaska Railroad from Athern. And with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.